from Wallace Wade Stadium on the Duke University campus here in Durham, North Carolina on a beautiful fall day. The 4-2 Miami Hurricanes set to battle the 0-6 Duke Blue Devils. Jason Salatkin with you, pleased to be joined by former Hurricanes star quarterback Gino Toretta. And Gino, as you know, a tumultuous week down in Coral Gables for this football program with a lot of criticism and controversy coming out of that brawl against FIU. This football field a haven as these players seek refuge from the storm. Yeah, the game time couldn't come fast enough for Miami and their coaching staff and their players because they've been answering questions all week about suspensions, about what happened last week, what's going to happen in the future. And I think this is a way for this team to get back on the football field and show they're, they're a very good football team. 13 players suspended, Gino, after last week's incident. And you see the starters are highlighted there on your screen. Hardest hit the secondary defensively for the Canes. Yeah, no question. Brandon Merriweather, obviously, he's the leader of the defense. He's out of this football game. Chavez Grant is going to take his place. I'm sure he's going to be tested early. But both sides of the football for Miami are hurt hard. There's only four healthy wide receivers. And Derek Morris, their right guard, is out of this football game as well. So you would think for Duke, a team searching for its first win, and their head coach, Ted Roof, uh, a window of opportunity is open against Miami today. Well, and they're looking for anything. I mean, when you play Alabama and Florida, to state in a row and now you're playing Miami you're playing a, a bunch of great programs and that you're mismatched against but you know what hey it could be the opportunity for Duke to get their first win of the season and their quarterback not unfamiliar to South Florida football fans a true freshman out of Hialeah Miami Lakes Thad Lewis and Lewis probably coming off his best game against Florida State he had a, a great week last week and uh, you know they want to see him he's going to run around move around in the pocket not your pocket passer so look for him to test this young secondary it's a beautiful day for football here in Durham North Carolina the Blue Devils and the Hurricanes set to do battle coming up next on CSS Opening kickoff here from Wallace Wade Stadium on the campus of Duke University. Jason Solotkin, Gino Toretta, and of course, uh, trying to weather the storm, all the criticism and controversy surrounding Larry Coker and the Hurricanes in the wake of that ugly incident in the victory over Florida International. The Hurricanes won the toss deferred, so Duke receives the opening kickoff and a run along the left sideline for Jabari Marshall. Marshall, a sophomore out of Atlanta, takes it back 28 yards and a positive start to the game for an 0-6 Duke team, which is showing some emotion on the sideline. And as we mentioned, Gino, a, a window of opportunity here open with the suspensions and a Hurricane team that might have had a difficult time finding focus on the football field throughout practices this week. Well, the suspension's already hurt him right there. Monroe usually kicks off for him. The punter usually kicks the ball out of the end zone, and most of the time it's a touchback. But here, great field position for the Duke offense to start this football game. And leading the offense is a true freshman, Thad Lewis, and he looks to pass out of the backfield on first down and has it complete. And a nice gain on first down for the Duke Blue Devils. Lewis completes his first pass. And we'll take a look at the rest of the Blue Devils on offense. Uh, a lot of changes to the offensive line heading into the season and not a lot of experience. Matt Rumsey is the starting center. In the backfield, the fullback is Robinson. Euron Riley had a 100-yard uh, receiving game last week against Florida State. And already an injured player for Miami down on the field defensively. And you talk about an already depleted Hurricanes team. In light of the suspensions, they can ill afford any more starters going down. Yeah, they can. It looks like, I, th I think it's a linebacker, number 51, Romeo Davis, the middle linebacker. I mean, that is really the only position, that, that and the defensive line, where there is some type of depth and there are backups there that are, uh, that are ready to play. Romeo Davis, the starting middle linebacker, will get to the rest of the middle of the Hurricanes defense. There you see Miami up front and the seniors, Atkins, Brown, and Pata, Calais Campbell, who's taken huge steps forward in the last few weeks. So Romeo Davis is helped very slowly off the field. Gooden and Atkins, Spencer Atkins, starts for the injured, not suspended, but injured, John Beeson, one of the uh, leaders of this Hurricane defense. Injured player off the field. Here comes a second and five. And again, it's Lewis to pass deep. And it is incomplete. Threw it into double coverage downfield. His intended receiver, Jomar Wright, a junior out of Duncan, South Carolina. The Hurricanes had a safety over there. LeVon Ponder, who starts again. Uh, Ponder took over at the safety position after Brandon Merriweather 
was moved over to cornerback. Uh, Merriweather not available for the Hurricanes this afternoon. So it'll bring up a third and five situation, and we've yet to see Duke uh, test out the Hurricane defense on the ground, and with good reason. We'll get to some superlative numbers for this Miami run defense in a few moments. Here's a four-wide receiver set, as Gino mentioned earlier. Lewis with a quick drop, and it is broken up, and it's intercepted by Phillips. For Miami, the safety, Kenny Phillips, with his second interception of the season. He had a pick of FIU's Josh Padrick in the end zone last week, and that was a game-turning play, and he picks off the Duke true freshman quarterback early here in the first quarter. Well, what a play by Kenny Phillips. He, he lines up at the corner position on the outside receiver. Duke's just trying to go with the quick slant. Phillips, the ball's high, tips it, trying to knock it away, but he doesn't knock it down. He just takes a little steam off the ball, tips it to himself, a great play by Kenny Phillips to start this football game. So Kyle Wright takes over. Great field position on the offense at the Duke 41-yard line of first and 10. Kyle coming off his finest performance and a misdirection off the play action. He goes over the middle of the field, and that was a problem last week. There is a late flag, however, in the backfield. Might be a late hit against the Blue Devils. Yeah, that's going to be a roughing the passer call against Duke. It was interesting. He was going over the middle of the field, Kyle, as he did in the first quarter last week when he overthrew Greg Olson, and Olson was hit hard on the play, suffered a concussion, and was lost for the rest of the uh, evening's uh, contest. And he's not starting here today. I don't think Miami's going to risk. Miami's not going to risk Greg Olson getting dinged up versus Duke when they have to play Georgia Tech next weekend. So, uh, you know, Miami's thin all over the place, injuries and and uh, suspensions. Here we'll take a look, just a naked bootleg. He gets out there. Oh, just a clearly way late hit by the out middle linebacker, Tawa Ili Ili. They're going to test us out early. Michael Tawi Ili, and you don't expect that kind of play from one of the leaders of this Duke defense. Kyle in the shotgun, and he fakes a handoff, stays on his feet, and is hit hard at the 23-yard line. Jabaris James in the backfield off the play fake and Kyle keeps it for a gain of about two or three yards. Here's the rest of the Hurricanes starting offense. The change up fronts at the right guard position with Derek Moore suspended this afternoon. Alex Poe, a very versatile senior, makes just his second start in his UM career. In the backfield, we just saw Javaris James off the play action. Jarrell Mabry, who started games earlier in the season at fullback, is back in there for the suspended James Bryant. Gain of three for Kyle on the first down run. And again, he operates out of the shotgun. Three wide receivers to his left. And this time it is a handoff to James who shows speed up the middle. And that, you'd have to imagine, was set up by the previous play and the play action. The first down run for Javaris as we take a look at the Blue Devils defensively. And uh, they've got some uh, solid players along that defensive line. Ben Sogabasi. And Apaka Warwick is also uh, a mouthful, but a, a handful for the Hurricanes offensively. We saw Tawi Lee with the uh, early infraction, and there's the secondary led by one of the finest cornerbacks in the country, number 11, John Talley, a senior, who has 15 career interceptions. Off the first down uh, run by James. Wright was looking to pass again, but we've got whistles and flags before the snap. Well, it took the Hurricanes and Coach Coker a little bit too long to sit up as you take a look at some uh, air traffic controllers on the sideline calling the signals Kirby Freeman and Matt Pirelli, the backups, to Kyle Wright. Early in our first quarter after the interception by Kenny Phillips, the Hurricanes trying to take advantage on the offense. A double tight end formation, but the Hurricanes again look to pass, and it is complete. The true freshman shields into the end zone for an early Hurricanes touchdown. 18 yards goes the pass play from Kyle Wright to Sam Shields. Well, a nice throw and catch right there for the touchdown, but when Kyle Wright let go of this football, I thought Chris Davis' safety for Duke was in position to pick it off. He just couldn't get over in time to make the play. Shields goes up high, picks this ball out of the air for the touchdown. 
Well, the Hurricanes, John Petty lines up for the point after, and he puts it through. So with 12-29 to play in our first quarter, the Hurricanes feed off the interception, and Sam Shields has the Hurricanes on top, 7 to nothing. CSEC and ACC football on CSS On Demand, available in select markets. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. Well, a gorgeous afternoon here on the Duke University campus. Blue Devils trailing the Canes 7-0. Which top 25 team ended up on top? We'll catch Clemson and Georgia Tech in a big ACC showdown. Coming up next on CSS and get five other college football replay games as well this week. Visit css-sports.com for a complete replay schedule. Ad Lewis calls his own number on first down out of the shotgun and picks up maybe two yards for Duke. The Hurricanes really didn't suffer any losses up front, and so Duke will have a hard time. Lewis makes his way uh, back onto the uh, field for the Blue Devils at quarterback. I thought we might get a look at Marcus Jones, who doubles as a wide receiver. Now they'll line up backs in the I formation after a gain of three. Duke's first two possessions, six plays, only 11 yards, and the interception. Fine punt by Daly as Duke back inside its 10, and Lewis trying to improvise, nothing doing, and he struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, the defensive line that's having their way for the University of Miami right now, and you would expect it. I mean, this Duke Green offensive line came into the season only 12 combined starts amongst the five players up front. And, uh, you know, it takes a while to gel, but it's awful tough when you're playing a defensive front four as good as Miami's. Take a look at Miami's work defensively against uh, opposing running games throughout the season. There has been no running on the Hurricanes. Uh, the best effort on the ground was from Louisville, and they were in double digits, 95 yards. Nobody has hit the uh, century mark. Out of the backfield, the completion going to be a first down for the Duke Blue Devils as the catch is made by Justin Boyle, the junior out of Ackworth, Georgia. A gain of 15 yards, and the Blue Devils have a first down. Well, a breakdown in coverage right, right there by the Miami defense. Justin Boyle just runs a simple swing pass. And Thaddeus Lewis hits him on the run, a good throw. He just basically outrushes and outflanks the defenders getting to the sidelines in the first down. It'll be a first and 10 from the 22-yard line. At the very least, uh, they get away from the shadow of their own goal post. One man in the backfield, two wide receivers to the left. And it's a handoff and met in the backfield and tackled by Kenny Phillips. On the play for the Blue Devils is number 40, Ronnie Drummer, who is at the specially designed uh, devil position in the backfield, trying to get him involved with great speed, but Phillips was awaiting him. Well, Miami's prepared for this all week because talking to Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, he said, well, when 40's in the game, Ronnie Drummer, there's some try kind of trick play coming at us right there. Duke tried the reverse, but they, Miami's defense was ready for it. A loss of five last year in the Orange Bowl. Drummer had a career day, 101 yards rushing, including an 81-yard sprint. And there's going to be a big game, close to a first down, sprinting across the 30-yard line for the Blue Devils. And fired up is uh, number 21, uh, Simon Chang. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. The eighth part of his number, the number 78. He started every game this season, one of the co-captains on offense. Play action again, and Kyle will keep the football. Gets a block from Epps and runs out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Number 18, Dietrich Epps, a freshman tight end out of Richmond, Virginia, getting some extended playing time after the loss uh, at the tight end position of the injured Greg Olson. And, uh, of course, DeLeon Farr suspended for the game as well at the position. Well, nice job by Kyle, just another naked bootleg. Nobody's there 
nobody's open on the outside to throw that football, so he just tucks it and runs it. The one thing I don't like, he takes hits on the end of these runs. It's like, as a quarterback, just run out of bounds. You don't need to get hit. Gino could teach a course. Any, any hit you can avoid, <laughs> avoid it. It was a 14-yard gain, and Kyle is looking deep. Left sideline, leg it, and incomplete, perhaps a little bit underthrown. They were testing number 10, Deonto McCormick, the fifth-year senior. And you would, have, you would imagine that they would test McCormick with John Talley on the other side of the field, and McCormick comes up a, a little bit lame. Might be the hand or the wrist on that defensive play. Maybe even a shoulder, something like that. But, I, you know, Kyle, I like it. Uh, second is short. I think that's your most aggressive play call right there. you got to go deep, take a shot downfield. But Kyle's got to throw this ball in front of his receiver. I understand you never want to out-throw a guy and you want to give your guy a chance to catch it. But time and time again, he's under-throwing these deep balls. He always had speed at the receiver position at Miami. And, Gino, I know you had some great wide receivers and uh, a great arm as well. And uh, he also understood, let the guys go after it and use their athleticism, which Lance Leggett obviously brings to the table. Here's a third and one, three men in the backfield, and it'll be a run to the right. Looks like Tyrone Moss into the game for the first time as he moves the pile. And another late flag on the field, but you got to love the leg strength of the second string running back, Tyrone Moss. And Moss just kind of get back into the flow of things with that knee injury last year. I think he's just a little bit, uh, get the call from the official. Moss is just, uh, I think he's carrying around a little bit of extra weight from uh, not being able to work out after that knee injury. Well, it has been a problem for him throughout his UM career. It looked like a holding call during that run, getting some help from one of his teammates, and I don't know that he needed it for the first down. I think the officials are trying to figure out here if the holding was after Moss picked up the first down. Do they give him the first and make it first down in about 20? Or mm. Taking a long time to sort this out. Here comes our call. Well, no luck for the Hurricanes. You saw the referee this afternoon, Tom McCreesh, out of the ACC. And so the Hurricanes will line up again after the penalty. Now a third and long for Coker's offense. And just a little counter play. And Moss does a good job bouncing to the outside. But his receiver, Lance Leggett, gets called for a hold. And that was a late hold. He had already gotten the first down. Leggett did not need to hold on that play. The two defenders, Glenn Williams and Jeremy Edwards, had a handful, and that'll bring our first quarter to a close. So after the penalty, it'll be a third and nine. The Hurricanes had the early touchdown with Sam Shields connecting with his quarterback, but Duke has held strong on the defense ever since. 7 nothing, Miami's lead, heading into our second period of play. Hurricanes on a third and nine offensively, switching sides, start of our second quarter. Here comes the blitz. Canes pick it up, pass complete. Shields breaks to the inside. He's got room. 45, 50, Duke territory. One man to beat. He's going to be shoved out of bounds. And Sam Shields, who had the early touchdown with a 43-yard gain on third down. Well, a great job by the offensive line and Moss, the running back, giving Kyle Wright time to throw this football. The Duke defense blitz. Sam Shields does a nice job getting upfield, but what he does is he has the first down when he makes the catch, but the Duke defense is nowhere to be found. He makes a move and gets upfield for the big play. So already more than 60 yards receiving for this young man. The true freshman out of Sarasota had the touchdown early in the first quarter. Canes now at the Duke 33 with right from the shotgun. Passes short and nearly picked off. Appeared to be some miscommunication with his receiver, Lance Leggett. Yeah, Kyle wanted to get rid of that ball quick. It was just a simple bang eight route, a quick post. Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin made that route famous in the National Football League, but Leggett wasn't even looking for the football on the break. Perhaps not surprising, the Hurricanes have chosen to go pretty exclusively with the passing game. Last week, the Duke secondary overmatched by Florida State. The Seminoles with 321 yards through the air. Again, Kyle from the shotgun, and there's a handoff, and Tyrone Moss spins away from a defender in the backfield and pounds his way across the 30-yard line. Take a look back at the first quarter statistics. The Hurricanes, the 7 to nothing lead, 
rushing yardage is uh, virtually even, slightly more damage through the air for the Hurricanes and uh, time of possession in favor of Duke. Well, uh, pretty much an even stats, and it's just the only reason the touchdown right there was the interception, the early interception by Thaddeus Lewis on the first drive, Duke's opening drive. You know, you see the 0-6 record for Duke, and uh, understandably many fans would dismiss them as a threat even with an undermanned Hurricane team, but this is a Duke team that had a lead in Tuscaloosa heading into the second half a few weeks ago and lost by only one point against Wake Forest. Rashawn Jones with the reception on the right side and he's got another Hurricane first down. Well, the Hurricanes having to go a little bit deeper at that wide receiver position. You, you start with the suspension to the senior Ryan Moore, the injury to Darnell Jenkins that has thrust uh, the likes of Sam Shields and of course in that situation Rashawn Jones who hasn't seen much playing time at the position. Well Jones just ran a simple flat route but the Duke coaching staff got the defensive play call in so late that they were having trouble lining up against Miami's formation. Well the Hurricanes will use their first time out here in the first half threatening to score with the ball at the 20 yard line of the Blue Duke Blue Devils. Miami's lead is seven to nothing. On uh, the sidelines for the Blue Devils, Ted Roof in his third full season as the Duke head coach. His defense uh, being pushed back, trailing 7 to nothing, and the Canes with the ball first and 10 at the Duke 20-yard line. Miami with three wide receivers into the game, all split wide to the left side with Tyrone Moss in the backfield. And Kyle passes complete across the 10-yard line is number 87, Khalil Jones. Well, there you see the arm strength of Kyle Wright. He just takes his shotgun snap, sets his feet, and just throws a bullet. The linebacker's in position to make that play, but Kyle just delivers the ball to Jones right by him to pick up another first down. Tackle made by the safety Davis for Ryan Hill. Excuse me, Khalil Jones is the third catch of the season. It goes for 12 yards and another hurricane first down. Now a first and goal from the nine. So they go from spreading the field to a tight end formation, and they go close. They bunch them close to the line of scrimmage. Play action with Moss. Kyle rolling right, buying time at the 20. He'll throw it out of bounds. Waited to the last second, and he takes another hit over on the sidelines. There's another one of those late hits. I think Kyle takes a lot of these hits in, in unnecessary fashion. There's nobody open. Should just throw that football away and go play second down. <laughs> Greg Akinbaye with the pressure in the backfield, forcing Kyle to throw over the sidelines and also taking a hit was Kyle. A gain of one, they'll call it. So now a second end goal from inside the nine yard line with two receivers to the left and Rashawn Jones in motion in the backfield. Instead, off the deception, it's a handoff to Tyrone Moss. They had Jones in the backfield with the fake reverse, but the early handoff to Moss, he brings it inside the five yard line. Injured man for the Duke Blue Devils, it's uh, number 84, and that is the defensive end, Patrick Bailey. And again, the movement of the backfield, but the handoff to Tyrone Moss. That tray formation, just the fake reverse. And the Duke defense, when Miami's gone that Trey formation the last couple of times, they've taken the tackle and kind of uh, stunned him to the outside for contain. I would not be surprised they line up in that formation and then run the ball directly at the defensive tackle because if he's got contain in that situation, he's going to be going on his heels. Miami's got a good running lane, good play call in that formation. The injured player, the defensive end, Patrick Bailey, one of the top defensive players, two sacks leading the Blue Devils. On third and goal, incomplete. Sam Shields with his hands up. Didn't have an opportunity over the middle of the field, and the Hurricanes will have to try the field goal with John Petty jogging onto the field. Well, Kyle led Shields just a little bit too far on the inside. There was some contact there with Chris Davis and Shields, but I think that throw was so far to the inside that Shields didn't have a chance to make that ca catch nor was it would have been a good call if the official made that a pass interference call. 12 plays on the drive. Here's number 13, and it's a 21-yard attempt for John Petty, and it is good for the Hurricane senior kicker out of Clearwater. 
Just his fourth make on eight attempts this season. 12-32 to play in our second quarter. 10-0 Miami's lead. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. Oh, there he is. That's for you. There is no well, the referee says no disputable evidence that or inconvertible evidence. I don't know. A lot of syllables there. The bottom line is the catch. They the can't fumble. overturn the call. It was a fumble and a great play by Grant, and then Ponder was right there to pick it up. Well, Levon Ponder with his first uh, fumble return. He forced the fumble against Houston, as mentioned. Uh, the running back, Jackie Battle, earlier this season. That was a huge momentum shifter, as is this, as Duke would have had a first down. On first down, Kyle Wright back on the offense, and his tight end, Chris Zellner, brings it in. And just when you think the Duke offense is starting to get something going, right they turn the ball over and make a mistake, and that was a clutch play. That was fourth and three. Clutch play would have moved the chains, would they would have kept the ball, would have been great field position, but uh, all for not with a great defense. And it play. would have given a true freshman quarterback a lot of confidence. Uh, well, on you team can't that blame him. It. He's the one. Right. He's, he is making plays so far today. I think the one high ball, the interception, was just a high pass early in this game. Second down and four, and Kyle has a man again, and uh, unfortunately losing his balance out of the backfield is a player who's been. Prominently featured in the first half, and that's Rashawn Jones, who prior to this week's game, Gino, had only been seen really on special teams returning punts in the second half against FIU. You take a look at this Duke Blue Devils schedule. Again, this tough stretch with the Crimson Tide, the Seminoles, and the Canes, three schools with a combined 13 I was the championships. Coach saw it, so you're not playing history, boys. You're playing the Hurricanes this there you week. Go, and you're Coach playing Toretta. a depleted Hurricanes team with all the suspensions. This is a, a bit of a homestand for this uh, Duke Blue Devils team as Miami seems to have a first down on that play. Still down on the field is uh, Lance Leggett, a gain of eight. Well, a good throw and catch right there. Still down, and this is going to be a concern, is Lance Leggett. John Talley is All-American corner. They, Duke came with an all-out blitz. Kyle just takes a quick drop, tries to hit up, hits Leggett on the slant. Tally's right there, but you can't defend a good route and a good throw, and that's exactly what this was right here. Oof, the uh, second defender you, you see there for the Blue Devils, that's uh, number three, Vince Ogabasi. And Lance kind of got bent in the wrong direction. Hmm. Well, I tell you what, Gino, this wide receiver position, we were just mentioning Rashawn Jones uh, getting a lot of playing time. Lance Leggett's your leading receiver. Well, they and only really the only guy with experience. The, they only had four guys on the depth chart coming into this game. They threw in Rashawn Jones because he was going to be here and he'd practice some this week. If Leggett goes down, I don't think they have anybody else on this on the roster here on the travel squad. Well, Ryan Hill suspended from his involvement in last week's altercation. So it would be Khalil Jones, Rashawn Jones. And, of course, on the other side, Sam Shields and uh, Terrell Walden available well, throwing, for Miami. Throw in the concussion by Olsen. That's right. really depleted in your receiving core. Well, Miami leading 10 to nothing and threatening again late in our first half. Leggett walking very slowly on the sideline. We'll see if he can return. Kyle will try another receiver. Catch is made by Sam Shields. Looking for the end zone. Second time today, and he's got it. The true freshman with a second touchdown of the afternoon. It goes 26 yards. Well, another great throw and catch. Miami's been trying this route all afternoon. Just a simple bang eight, just a quick post. Kyle takes his five-step drop, sticks his foot in the ground, and throws a bullet over the middle. And then once Shields gets it, he makes a move. Once he makes that safety miss, he's off to the races for the end zone. Sam Shields, two touchdowns today, three on the season. Of course, he caught that pass from LeVon Ponder in the win over North Carolina. And John Petty with the point after Sam Shields showing some stardom at the wide receiver position. What a great throw by Kyle Wright. Sticks it right on the run. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. 
the Hurricanes have suffered three injuries this afternoon. Davis, the linebacker, Leggett, the receiver, and McCarthy also slow to get back to the Hurricanes bench. He's been an excellent special teams player all season. Duke back on the offense under three minutes to play in our first half. The Blue Devils really have not threatened, although on their last drive, they would have kept the drive alive on a fourth down completion that turned into a fumble recovery, set up the Hurricanes touchdown. They keep it on the ground with Boyle showing some power up the middle of the field. Well, the Hurricanes have been doing this in recent weeks, Gino, taking advantage of the opposition's mistakes. The early interception by Kenny Phillips led to the first touchdown by Sam Shields. The fumble and big recovery and return by LeVon Ponder sets up their second touchdown, also Sam Shields. Yeah, no question. I mean, these, these turnovers for Dukes are just, is just killing this offense because they had a nice drive. They're backed up inside their five and moved the ball well right down the football field, but a uh, fumble just thwarted the drive. Second and five, four receivers, but a handoff to Boyette testing the left side of the offensive line, right side of the Hurricanes oh, right. defense. And Miami is there with Brian Patton, number 99, Kareem Brown. Brown lost his starting job earlier in the season. They also help up the linebacker, Glenn Cook. And the Miami front four and linebackers are just there. I mean, awful tough to move guys like Kareem Brown at 6'4", 315 pounds. Again, the game began with Miami giving up on average just about two yards per carry and 57 yards a game, third best in the country. And those numbers might be improving before this afternoon's game is all said and done. Lewis, another handoff, and this is gonna be a loss on the play, and the Duke fans may not enjoy the conservative approach to the offense with the team trailing 17 to nothing, posting an 0-6 record on the season, but Ted Roof with his well, team in his own territory is not gonna listen. And you're facing the defense that's <laughs> given up less than 60 yards a game on the ground. You would have to think that uh, I'd take my chances with play action then just running it at the strength of the defense. Well, do coach Ted Roof takes a conservative approach on offense. The Hurricanes stop the clock with 51 seconds to play. and They'll get another opportunity after the timeout and the punt by Feinberg. Again, a low line drive bounces at the 40 and Jones calls it off. So with 43 seconds, 42 seconds, they'll call it, and it continues to wind down. That's what you call the home field clock Humber operator. And a 31-yard punt, Miami. We'll see if they can at least get into field goal position with uh, one Duke, of their the timeouts remaining. coaching staff on the sideline, they didn't want, want their own players to touch the ball. They wanted the clock to run. They wanted the official <laughs> to stop it. <laughs> Throw up the white flag on the sideline in the guess second quarter. You could just let that football sit there. You could, as <laughs> long as the, well, the official the would happen. At some point in time, the official would call it. So Miami, aggressive on the offense, unlike Duke and Javaris James. Nifty out of the backfield. Again, Miami only one timeout to work That's with. Down to 24 Javaris seconds. It will briefly game. stop the clock to move the chains. A gain of 13 to the true freshman. Well, here's where a lack of depth and experience is going to hurt you right now. Kyle's just trying to get guys lined up correctly. And trying to line up three receivers. Down to 20 on the clock. Kyle can't find anyone. Under pressure and throws it out of bounds. And down to 14 seconds and a, a late, late play. Penalty. And I didn't see any contact back there, Gino. Let's see what the officials spotted. A grounding. Intentional grounding. It was not out of the pocket, and I guess no receiver was in the area. Didn't the ball go over one of the receivers? Well, of course there's no receiver in the area. He threw it in the, on the track or on the field, but that doesn't mean he didn't throw it over one of his Second receiver's round. head. Quarterback was not out of the pocket. That right there is a terrible call by the official. I mean, it's over one of your players' heads. Yeah, you're trying to throw it away, but if you're not going to protect the quarterback and let him, it, you know, I mean, it's in the general direction of a player. And so with 14 seconds left after taking the loss on the play, that will effectively kill the drive, and Larry Cooker calls for Kyle Wright to take a knee. So that is how our first half will end, and the Miami Hurricanes who whittle down as they are as depleted as they appear on the roster, a very healthy lead at the intermission. Our score from Durham, North Carolina, it's the Hurricanes 17, the Duke Blue Devils nothing on CSS.
Set for our second half of football here in Durham. Miami leading Duke 17 to nothing. And already a flag on the kickoff. And the kickoff from Duke's Joe Surgan, the first time we've seen him today. And the return will come back short of the 20-yard line. The tackle is made as uh, for Miami. It is Rashawn Jones, and we see a penalty that might force another kickoff. Yeah, that's going to be offsides on the kickoff team for the Duke University. And if I'm Larry Coker, I make him re-kick that ball. Yeah, the return was uh, short of the 20-yard line, so they'll make the call on the field. Special teams huddle. Number 26, uh, the kicker, Joe Sergan, going to kick it off again. And Rashawn Jones, again, uh, really heavily involved for Miami in the first half, will be called upon as a wide receiver as well after the injury to Lance Leggett. Jones is back at his own six-yard line along with number 32, Andrew Johnson. There's Jones, who did drop a pass there in the second quarter. And, no, no, uh, these, are, these are things when you're 0-6. These are things that happen to an 0-6 team. Here you pin Miami's offense back inside their own 20 on the open, opening kick of the second half, and one of your uh, your kickoff cover guys is offside, and I'm sure Miami's going to take advantage of it with try to get good field position. Well, they back it up, and again, it's Rashawn Jones. This time he fields it at the 15, across the 20, stutter step move at the 25, and steps out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Let's take a look back at some Rashawn of the halftime numbers, start. and uh, again, Miami pretty much yeah, relying on the passing That's game. Right. And the true freshman Sam Shields with the two touchdowns, uh, not much done on the ground by either either team. Yeah, lack, lack of third down conversions by the Duke Blue Devils, but really the disappointing thing, I would think looking at those stats from Miami, is only 47 yards rushing in the first half. I mean, you should be able to run the ball against this Duke defense. And the turnovers really led to the demise of the Duke team in the first half, the early interception by Kenny Phillips, and then the fumble uh, that was returned by Ponder. The Miami is going to be tackled in the backfield on their first down play. Right down Sam Shields, uh, Miami's Rich Olsen trying to pull Duke, and it didn't happen. Well, I think the Duke defense, I mean, they, they obviously are pretty smart students up here at Duke. They, I would think so. They, they yeah. saw that play, I think, three or four times in the first half, and I'm sure the coaches, they got them well coached up and prepared for that play. The Duke defense right there to get, get around Shields and take him down for the loss. So the formation we saw Kyle in uh, frequently in that first half, the shotgun is what he reverts to after the first down loss of five yards, and the pass is caught. And the receiver for Miami's number 87, Khalil Jones. And Jones is uh, starting the second half at wide receiver. The three receivers set. Fortunately for Miami, Lance Leggett is back on the field after that injury in the second quarter. And Idarko, the safety for Duke, does a nice job of keeping Jones in front of him after he makes the catch and able to push him out of bounds. Just gives up the short game. There's Lance Leggett. It was hit pretty hard and sandwiched uh, between two defenders in the second quarter. Third and 11 for Miami. Four receivers in. Leggett over the middle of the field, but Kyle doesn't see him. Kyle trying to buy time, floats it out of bounds to avoid the loss. And uh, a couple of Miami players. That's going to be a, a personal a foul against one of the Miami offensive linemen. And I believe that's going to be on 64, Jason Fox. Jason Fox and Alex Post 63 were both involved, but there are multiple infractions. Two penalty flags down on the field on yes, opposite sides. I would sides. say it's probably going to be an unnecessary roughness because one of the offensive linemen, I think it was Fox downfield, basically decleats one of the Duke defenders who's nowhere even close to Kyle right before he throws that ball away. There's the penalty call oh, against I'm Miami. Wrong. Dead wrong. Intentional grounding. Again, and, second time. And the illegal men downfield. Now, he's out of the pocket. Now, how is it intentional grounding? Ineligible receiver was the one penalty. And uh, perhaps the NS could not have been in a intentional grounding on that play. Clearly, he was out of bounds almost well, Kyle, to, out of the pocket. He gets time to look downfield, but just trying to run, throws that ball away in the last second. But his, his offensive lineman had already moved downfield, expecting him to tuck it and run. 
In punting formation for Miami is uh, Darren Daly, who had an outstanding punt in the first half, a 54-yarder. He can't field the snap. It's in the end zone. He's going to kick it out of bounds and take the safety. Well, again, Darren Daly taking over for the suspended Brian Monroe. We'll take a look at the replay. Well, and that Gino. might be just what the Duke team needs. Daly better put his helmet on. Isn't there a rule in college you take your helmet off? It's a 15-yard penalty. Here's oh, a snap, the snap. The snap. It doesn't matter. Man, it, Ralph Sampson back there <laughs> as your punter couldn't get that snap way over his head. Gino, here we are at Duke with all the potential Blue Devil basketball. I know. I, I, was just saying, I know we were talking all about their basketball program before <laughs> and at halftime, and I didn't think. I'm sorry, oh, Christian Leitner. There you go. They've never had the big man. All right, Cherokee Parks. He's probably the tallest Duke <laughs> basketball player I can remember. Well, the long snapper, obviously on that play, John Rochford, uh, did not give Darren Daly a chance. So the safety is actually the second in as many weeks for the Blue Devils. They had a more conventional safety against Florida State last week. In that case, uh, Darren Daly opted for the two-point loss as opposed to a potential six-point loss had he recovered uh, the football and Duke, Duke was able to take over for the touchdown. So it's Miami 17. The Duke Blue Devils will get the football back after their first two points are put up on the board. So the errant long snap leads to a safety as Darren Daly kicks it behind his end zone. And now it'll be Francesco Zampagnon to kick it off. The Blue Devils will get it back on offense. Uh, they trail now 17 to 2 early in our third quarter. Actually, that is a Darren Daly to kick it off for Miami and shows uh, some good strength behind the 20 yard line is where Duke will bring it back. And uh, for the Blue Devils, a return by number one Jabari Marshall and takes it across 35 for a return of 20 yards. And we'll see the Duke Blue Devils on offense for the first time in this second half. Again, those turnovers. A big problem, the early interception by Thad Lewis on the first drive. Kenny Phillips picked it off. And uh, later in the first half, after a, a big drive, which included a 50-plus yard reception by Jomar Wright on a fourth down, Wright made a catch, fumbled, and Ponder brought it back for the Canes, set up their second touchdown. So when talent is an issue in uh, week in, week out in this tough ACC, you're often overmatched when you create your own mistakes. You don't help out the cause. First down pass, and the catch is made. And Sharpton is there for the tackle, but not before a first down. Gino, let's take a look back yeah, at this turnover. Here's just the first high ball, but Kenny Phillips makes an outstanding play, tips that ball right to himself. There's the, first, the fourth down play that Ponder picks up, and Duke would have kept that drive alive had uh, Joe Mar Wright not fumbled the ball. Well, getting the tight end, Norman G involved on first down. They move the chains, and the ball is at the 49-yard line of the Blue Devils with quarterback Lewis in the shotgun. They send Drummer in motion, and right to pass over the middle. In between two defenders, it is incomplete. Intended for 15, Eron Riley. And Thaddeus Lewis thought Riley was going to be open running a crossing route. There was man underneath coverage. Well, once again, LeVon Ponder, the safety, comes out of nowhere, gets underneath that route, makes it a tougher throw than it should have been because Riley had actually beaten the defender, Glenn Sharp, off the ball. Well, Ronnie Drummer, who was involved in that last play, is back to the sidelines. Every time you see him on the field, it's some bit of deception or creativity. A delayed handoff, and Miami's defense waiting for the ball carrier. Calais Campbell, among others, 98. Baratka Atkins, the senior, is there. And the tackle is made by a couple of veterans on the Hurricane defense. I think Duke's got to just scrap these plays and just go ahead and, and let Lewis throw the ball every down. That's got to be a, a, a fake. If they're going to show run, fake the run, let them bootleg and throw the football because they got to they have to start making some plays downfield to Clifford, get back in this football game. Clifford Harris, uh, Gino, one of those uh, running backs, a three-pronged attack in the backfield for the Blue Devils, brings up a third and 14. 
you can see they've had their struggles on third down. Plenty of time to pass. Nobody open. Lewis takes a, a sliding stop as he had three or four Hurricane defenders, including Daryl Sharpton, in front of him. Well, a nice job by Lewis there. They had called the screen pass, and really the Miami defense sniffed out the screen. Lewis knows that he's got nowhere to go with the football, but what he does, he starts to scramble. Right here, he realizes, I can't throw the football away because my offensive linemen are already downfield. I got to just take the sack. A nine-yard loss on third down, and Feinberg is in to punt once again for Duke. In the first half, he had four punts, averaged 38, and keeps them low as uh, Rashawn Jones opts to take it, and he's tripped up in a fine play on special teams as a tackle is made by Brandon Taps. Kyle right and the Hurricanes offense back on the field. 10-34 to play in our third quarter with Tyrone Moss, uh, the running back, taking the handoff and Tyrone running Moss to the 35-yard line for a short game. Jeremy Edwards, the tackle for the Jeremy Edwards, the linebacker, Three brings seconds. Moss down. We're seeing more and more of Tyrone as you get a look at Edwards. Uh, Moss, of course, forced to miss some action earlier in the season as he was feeling a lot of soreness around that surgically repaired knee. Made his return and... Uh, that's a guy, Tyrone, you're going to need as you get into the crux of this ACC schedule. Number 30, Tyrone Moss led the ACC in touchdowns last year. And off the play action, Kyle Wright is brought down for a loss as the sack is made by the linebacker Cody Lowe, a senior out of Houston, Texas, and a loss of six yards. Well, a great job by Cody Lowe. He does not bite the play action fake at all. Doesn't. Take, he's got contained. That's his assignment. Does a nice job getting upfield, and as soon as Kyle Wright pulls that ball out, Lowe's there to take him down. Kyle's lucky to able to, he was able to hold on to that football and not fumble it. Cody Lowe's third sack of the season. That leads the Duke defense, and the loss creates a third and 12 for Miami. Kyle Wright's going to call a timeout. Early in this third quarter, the Miami Hurricanes burn one of their three timeouts. Taking a look at uh, the head coach for Duke, Ted Roof, former All-ACC linebacker at Georgia Tech, he has been entrusted with the very challenging job of resurrecting this uh, Duke University football program, one which hasn't seen a lot of success since the late 80s when the old ball coach was in Durham, Steve Spurrier. So you can win. It's been done before. Not very often, but it's been done before. Cody Lowe with a sack, forces the third and 12, and out of the timeout, Miami sets up a screen with Tyrone Moss, shakes one defender, but not the second, as he just about makes it back to the line of scrimmage, and that was the play developed during the timeout by offensive coordinator Rich Olson, and Duke was steady to the test. A nice job once again. Duke defense coached up very well, made their adjustments at halftime. They were prepared for the quick slip screen to Tyrone Moss. KC Camaro, the senior defensive tackle, number 51 on your screen there. And the last time the Hurricanes tried to punt, it ended with a safety with the snap going over the head of Daly. Better snap this time, but it looks like a short punt towards the near side of the field. Takes a Hurricanes bounce and another one in a fine roll. The second time today, it's going to look a lot better statistically. 55 yards for Darren Daly with a generous roll of the pigskin. The Duke Blue Devils, their only points on a safety earlier in this third quarter on the Aaron snap. And again, poor field position as they start at their 16-yard line. Lewis runs and passes and intercepted with a flag down. If Miami held on, it would be Kenny Phillips with the second interception off the deflection. The interception was made, but we'll have to check the penalty as it took place the interception did right in front of the Duke head coach well, you know what I think they're there I think Riley might have stepped out of bounds so that so the official it might not be a penalty if, if he's the first one that touches the football after he steps out of bounds it is a flag legal touching by the official that's what he's going to call and Phillips once again is there to make the make the uh, interception but I thought the quarterback, Lewis, forced this ball downfield. 
and Lewis gets over late, or Phillips, excuse me, gets over late to make the play, but an interception and a first down, great opportunity for, for the Miami offense once again. Well, Lewis looked like he was going to keep the ball. You saw Eron Riley, who was defended closely by Glenn Sharp. Riley deflected it, and Kenny Phillips in the right place at the right time. His second interception of the game and his third of the season. Kenny Phillips, the sophomore out of Carroll City High School, who last year was a freshman All-American. Perhaps a bit of a slow start to his sophomore season, but he has turned it on the last two weeks. And there again, Rashawn Jones out of the backfield, crosses the 35, but another penalty flag. That's going to be holding field. again on the outside. And these receivers, if you throw throw this bubble screen enough, these defenders are going to be there, and they're going to they know how to play this, and it's going to force it forces your blockers to try to make a, a block they can't do, and, and what happens is they end up holding. There they got a little face mask. Face mask by the Duke defense. I thought it was going to be holding downfield, but there you see, see the Shields, defender yeah. right in the middle of the screen grabs the face mask of Sam Shields. So again, Rashawn Jones involved. Ted Roof, the head coach for Duke, not happy with the call. It didn't didn't really look. I mean, for 15 yards, I don't know. It didn't look didn't look that bad. Well, Miami heavily penalized this afternoon. That's the third against Duke, and it seemed to be a lot more incidental than anything uh, by design. So the big penalty, and the Hurricanes march down to the Duke 19. Blue Devils show blitz. Here they come, and uh, they came at the right time because it was a handoff to Javaris James, and he was wrapped up in the backfield as a tackle was made by the weak side linebacker, Jeremy Edwards. Well, perfect job by Edwards there. Just a delayed blitz by the linebacker. He shoots the gap. The guards got no chance to block down and get him blocked. And Edwards does a nice job of getting in the, in the backfield and taking James down before he can make a move. Six yard loss, Jeremy Edwards, a senior out of Jackson, New Jersey. And Kyle. From the shotgun, he's got three receivers set to his right. Another blitz. This one to Jones. He's hit hard, stays on his feet, spins and makes a move, and a fine piece of running after the catch is made by Rashawn Jones. After watching Jones, I would probably have to say the only reason he's not listed in the depth charts may be questionable hands because once he has the football, this kid can do some things with it. Does a nice job there, spin move after initial contact, getting upfield. He is a junior wide receiver. Jones is 6'1", 196. As Gino mentioned, great size. The junior out of Lake City, Florida, took over as the punt returner after the injury to Jenkins and the suspension of Bruce Johnson and uh, also in the game as a wide receiver today. Kyle, plenty of options. End zone shields, and it is intercepted. Out of the end zone, John Talley. Who else for Duke? out of the secondary and for John Talley that is his fifth interception of the season he is first in the ACC and his 16th career interception second among all players in college football well this is just a forced throw by Kyle Wright and anytime you force a throw usually bad things happen but the thing is is he floats this ball as well see him he just like trying to just aims the ball downfield and lets Tally come off the underneath route to get underneath the corner route and pick that pass off. If Kyle's going to throw that ball, he's got to throw it with some velocity and some authority. That's what we used to call those old hope throws. You throw them and they hope they're complete, but uh, a lot of times your hopes uh, your hopes get dashed by a good corner and Tally's there to make the catch. His third interception in the last two weeks, he had two Tally did against Florida State's quarterback Xavier Lee last Saturday. And on first down, the Duke Blue Devils keep it on the ground and a big gain by Justin Boyle. He carries for 15 yards. Okay. Boyle's had very few carries, but every time he's touched this football, he's shown more speed and explosiveness in the backfield than anybody for Duke. Well, Raquan Boyette is their leading rusher in terms of yardage, but you're right, Boyle, but in the game has been productive, a 20-year-old junior. Came into the game averaging only 2.2 yards per carry. A lot of experience for Boyle as Duke lines up in the I formation. They send a receiver in motion. Boyle again 
Well, I'll tell you what, he doesn't mess around when he gets the football. He goes north and south, and that one a gain of about four yards. At 6'1", 225, you would expect him to just put his head down, but I've been impressed with the, the, the delay handoffs, the burst, and the ability to get upfield once he has the football. Ted Roof has been vocal on that sideline, trying to rally his troops. It, it is Duke leading here in the third quarter, 2 nothing, and uh, trying to take advantage after the interception from John Talley. Lewis now in the shotgun. Time to pass. Right side complete across the 45-yard line. Over there to make the catch for the Blue Devils is number five, Raphael Chestnut. And his first catch of the game. And Lewis threw a bullet, just a simple hitch route on the outside to Raphael Chestnut. And Lewis throws a bullet out there to move the chains and pick up another Duke first down. Ed Lewis, just the second true freshman to ever start a quarterback for Duke, uh, at least in the last 22 years. Zach Azak was a true freshman last year, and Lewis has assumed that quarterback role from Azak. Backs again in the I formation. Miami applying the pressure. Pass is overthrown, and it is intercepted again by Kenny Phillips. His second of the quarter, his third of the game, and fourth of the season. Well, Kenny Phillips is going to get credit for the interception, but really half the, that pick should go to Glenn Cook, the middle linebacker. He comes on a blitz, and he gets in the face of the quarterback, Thaddeus Lewis. Lewis tries to anticipate the throw to the tight end, Norman Gee, down the middle, and just overthrows it just by a hair. But Phillips is once again there to pick the pass off. Boy, three interceptions in the game with a star sophomore. And again, momentum is killed for Coach Roof and the Blue Devils. Just when you think they have some life in them, Gino, they turn the ball over. It's been the story of the day. Another developing story is the run defense for the Blue Devils. No room for Tyrone Moss. Well, to it, and Lewis, he's trying to throw that ball to Gee down the middle. Gee's listed as a defensive tackle, by the way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he's been starting as their as their tight end today, so it's it's kind of hard when you're uh, you're mismatched on a personnel basis against Miami. Here's a look at the Duke cornerback who intercepted Kyle Wright in the end zone on Miami's last drive. John Talley. He is the star of this Duke. Defense and uh, the entire Blue Devil football team, a highly accomplished senior, is tally. Flag is down, and Tyrone Moss again fights his way despite the defender on his ankle across the 45 yard line. Would be a big gain, but again, we'll have to check the flag. I think that's going to be encroachment on the defense. I think the de defender was in a neutral zone. Kyle did a nice job using the hard count to get the draw the defense off sides. So you could almost follow the body language of Coach Roof on the sideline. The frustrations piling up. Tyrone Moss finally found an alley cleared between his center and his right guard. Yeah, nice job. Just a lead counter draw right there. And Moss has got a huge hole to go through. Now the Canes in the I formation looking for blocks. He's going to spin and keep the, dry, the run alive again. And another flag flies in late as Moss is pushed out of bounds. And this game is just coming to a screeching halt with the numerous penalties piling up. Tyrone did a good job on the spin move to get back close to the line of scrimmage. Holding, Holding against the Miami offensive line. Again, uh, the Hurricanes without the services of starting right guard Derek Moore suspended. Alex Poe takes his position. You got to look at 78, the starting center Anthony Walschlager. He committed a penalty in that first half. Well, the Miami offense better start cleaning this stuff up because they got Georgia Tech next week and you can't play like they're playing right now and win that game next week. So, you know, I'm sure the coaching staff, they got to have some focus right now. These players realize, you know, you've got to get this cleaned up. Tyrone Moss again is brought down to the backfield. Three Duke defenders there to meet him. Ogabasi number three gets to his feet and there is uh, number 54 for the uh, Blue Devils. 
also over there to make the tackle. Kinbaye. Boy, anytime you're in a shotgun formation, really there's only a couple runs. You're going to run draw, you're going to run counter to the outside, and that's what they've been running all day. The, the, the thing I'm surprised at is even with a one-back system, you can get under center. Have Kyle Wright drop back, throw the ball out of the one-back, and also hand it off because then that opens up the inside and outside zone running plays where the running back's running downhill. Have a holding and then a loss on a run attempt. Third, uh, second and 22, and Lance Leggett is the receiver showing brilliant speed on the sideline to take it all the way down to the eight-yard line. He spiked the football, and he'll get penalized for that. And Leggett ran out of bounds on his own. He tried to tightrope the sideline. He was by the defender and lost his balance. Here, just a simple slant route. Kyle hits Leggett on the run. Leggett does a good job catching the ball with his body, getting upfield. Well, he's off to the races right here, but he gets too close to the sidelines, loses his balance. At the 20, steps out of bounds. And then throws the ball down. I, I'm not sure. I, this penalty right here, you know what this penalty is against Miami last week. They don't want the game to get out of hand. I mean, but this th that is just a questionable call by the official. I'm sorry. The kid was upset. He was disappointed. You know what? You're playing a game. You want to have fun. You want to do things well. But he just throws the ball down kind of in frustration. He wasn't doing anything against Duke. And I don't know. That's, uh, that's a call against Miami. That, it, that would never be called against anybody else but Miami. It was a 46-yard completion. He stepped out of bounds at the 20 with a 15-yard penalty. Brings it back to the 35. Pass is complete to Sam Shields in a dangerous Tally, Tally's throw. going to get another one. I tell you what, they keep running the same plays over and over again right on this Miami <laughs> offense. And Tally's smart enough, and he's made enough interceptions in his career to read what the quarterback's doing. There you see, he comes he off the man. outside receiver. He leaves his man. He's right there, just a half step late. Look for Miami, though, to fake that little out route and throw the ball by him. But uh, with his experience, I don't know if he'll bite on the fake. And the lack of experience from the receivers, how deep can you go into that playbook and feel confident that uh, these youngsters know the routes? Again, Wright looks for Sam Shields. Uh, he lays out for it, but it's incomplete. And the coverage by Deontay Foreman. And, and that's something that Rich Olson has discussed throughout the year, the Hurricanes offensive coordinator. He has been somewhat limited in his play calling because of the youth at the receiver position. Well, and that right there is just a low throw by Kyle. It's a tough throw on the on that post route, that quick post route, but it was low. Shields didn't have a chance to make this catch. Inside our final minute of the third quarter, again, Ted Root trying to implore uh, the Duke defense. Third and seven from the Duke 32. Kyle has time. Sets up to throw. Leg it incomplete. Lance never had a chance. Those, those are throws you want back as a quarterback because Kyle's got all day to throw this football. The offensive line did an outstanding job of being stout at the line of scrimmage, making a nice pocket for him, allows him to step up and throw the ball with some velocity, and he just misfires and throws it low. This would be about 49 yards, the attempt for John Petty. The snap, the hold by Pirelli, and the kick has enough distance. And for John Petty, it is good. So John Petty, two for two this afternoon. And that was his longest field goal of the season. Canes lead it 20 to 2. <laughs> 20 to 2, Miami leading Duke. 36 seconds to play in our third quarter. College football coverage kicks off Thursday at 8 with a Gulf South matchup between Arkansas Tech and Southern Arkansas. Catch it on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Just a gorgeous fall afternoon here in Durham, North Carolina. First shades of the fall foliage, which uh, you really don't get a whole lot of down in South Florida. Now, do you, Gino? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take some leaves back down south. Uh, for Miami, John Petty you saw that long uh, make of 49 yards. He is now third among active uh, scorers in college football with his 304 points. Been kicking since his freshman year at Miami. Garrett Rivas of Michigan up top the charts. 
Nice to see Petty rebound after missing his only attempt against FIU last week. He has been, to say the least, inconsistent throughout his senior season. He was two for two against North Carolina. Prior to that, he had missed three attempts in the last three games, and Coach Coker actually opened up the kicking competition heading into the game against North Carolina. The Duke Blue Devils back on offense, and they come back with a new quarterback in the game, and keeping it, calling his own number is number four, Clifford Harris, a gain of eight yards, and that was a, uh, a one-play wonder. Well, uh, Clifford Harris listed as the backup tailback, and he gets his first action in a quarterback, so when he's in a quarterback, they're essentially running the football. And that'll bring our third quarter to a close. Miami outscores Duke three to two in the period, and the Hurricanes have a 20 to two lead heading into our fourth period of play. Set to begin, quarter number four, 20 to two. Miami's lead over the Duke Blue Devils. Miami's first road game in the ACC this year. One and one is their conference record. A victory over North Carolina, the loss in the season opener against Florida State. Lewis is back in at quarterback after we saw Clifford Harris call his own number at quarterback on the first down. It was a second and two. And the handoff went to the fullback Tyler Robinson and good enough for a first down. Taking a look at number one, and he has been just that, Kenny Phillips, three interceptions. And the first one was outstanding, just tipping the ball to himself. There you see right place, right time as he comes over from his safety spot. And once again, just playing the middle of the field, a little center field action, picks off his third pick. That ties the University of Miami record for interceptions in a game. As the handoff goes to number 20, Justin Boyle, with several players through the annals for the Hurricanes defensively have had three interceptions. The most recent, Bobby Harden against BYU, and that was way back in 1988. As you take a look at the numbers here through three quarters, again, the turnovers had been the big problems. The penalties, though, adding uh, up third for Miami. Third down conversion. They're, 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 they were one, Duke was one of seven and a half. Now they're one of eight, so they're not being able to move the chains at all. They line up in the I formation, and again, it's uh, number 20 with a run, Justin Boyle. And again, just as we mentioned penalties, there's another one on the field. Oh, another. Justin Boyle with a carry. Flag on the play. Blaze Campbell there on defense for Miami. And it's uh, holding on the Duke offensive line. But there was a couple of the official just moved his moved his own flag. <laughs> Another look at Ted Roof, 20th head coach in the history of this Duke program, took over in December of 2003. Well, Ted Roof had immediate success as an Holy interim head coach, but he has struggled with this program the last two years. Holding somewhere on your screen there. I'm sure, I'm sure of the five offensive linemen, three of the five holding <laughs> on that screen at one point in time. <laughs> Trying to contain, among others, Calais as, as every play in college or pro football, everybody's holding at some point in time. Third down and six for Lewis to pass, complete, and the tackle is made by Chavez Grant. Catch made by Marcus Jones. And he's spotted inside the... 40 yard line or just at the 40 close to a first down. The official is going to give the first down. So there you see it. They move the chains finally. This Duke offense getting something going. Marcus Jones also a backup quarterback a sophomore with the first down reception. And uh, the ball at the 41 yard line of the Blue Devils. 20 to 2 Miami's lead here in the fourth quarter play action Lewis who shows good speed and the catch is made and then dropped and one of the teammates bails out Tyler Robinson. I think that was Riley. Eron Riley was there to pick up the fumble by Tyler Robinson. And Riley does a great job picking this ball up and getting upfield for a few extra yards. There you see the play action naked bootleg hits his fullback out of the backfield makes a nice catch then the fumble. I think that'll be it. If it's challenged, it'll be a better spot <laughs> for the Miami defense, but I'm not sure they, they will even challenge that call. The hit was made by the weak side linebacker Spencer Atkins, forcing Robinson to lose the football. Riley, Riley's foot was out of bounds when he picked up the ball, so the ball should have been dead as soon as he touched it. 
So Duke inside Miami territory trying to put points up on offense for the first time today. Lewis again looks to the right side and this time catch is made by Raphael Chestnut who holds on. And will spot the ball close to the 35 yard line. What a size mismatch out there. Chestnut at 6'2", 190. Chavez Grant, the replacement for Brandon Merriweather, only 5'11", 175 pounds. Here's number five, Chestnut, a sophomore out of Reedsville, North Carolina. Came into the game second on the Duke offense with 18 catches. Has a couple on the afternoon. Three receivers for Lewis to choose from. Another quick drop, another catch is made on the right side. And good for a first down. Number 81, Joe Ball Wright, the junior, with his third catch of the afternoon. That is, Lewis has played a pretty good ball game this whole game. He hasn't shown any nerves. I mean, you're talking about a kid that was in high school in Miami last year. He's gone out, hasn't really been intimidated this game. He's made some nice completions. He converted on the fourth down. Unfortunately, his receiver, Joe Mar Wright, coughed the ball up after converting on the fourth down. How about Ted Roof recruiting down in South Florida trying to bring some talent to Durham. This one's going to be overthrown. After going to the right side three or four consecutive plays, he looks for number 15, Eron Riley, but overthrows the receiver uh, towards the end zone. Again, Thaddeus Lewis, and there's Ted Roof, went down to Opelaka and highly of Miami Lakes to recruit this young true freshman. Last year as a senior at Hylia Miami Lakes High School where he was coached by Jerry Hughes. He passed for more than 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns. He was also recruited by Michigan State, Pittsburgh, South Florida, and Texas Christian before ending up here in Durham. Second and 10, Lewis again to pass, another completion. And once again, it's 81, Joe Mar Wright for a short gain on the play. Levon Ponder tackle for the Hurricanes. And great open field tackle by Levon Ponder. Just a simple quick out route by the receiver. Joe Mar Wright makes the catch as he's trying to get up field. Ponder there to take down the receiver. Lewis against the Seminoles last week did not throw an interception. Unfortunately for him, he's been victimized by Kenny Phillips all day. Speaking of being victimized, the hurricane defense has done just that against Lewis on third down. Her average is down to 1.3. Pressure, Lewis pass, caught, and a first down. It appeared as if the safety might be able to come up with a big hit, Willie Cooper, but instead it's Joe Mar Wright holding on for a first down. Well, coming into this game, I know Randy Shannon wanted to make Lewis sit in the pocket and throw the ball as a pocket passer. I'm not sure that's a good good move because he does just throws a strike over the middle once again at Joe Mar Wright hits him right in stride right before the safety Willie Cooper can come up and make the play Looked like zone coverage as the linebacker Tavares Gooden was playing to the outside of the field so at the 17 is Duke again they have threatened in the game as this one is thrown behind the receiver but turnovers including that fumble on a fourth down in the second quarter. The interception by Phillips on the first drive have left Duke empty on offense. You know, the field gets a little bit tighter here, Gino, and without much of a running game, maybe it gets a little bit more difficult for Lewis to operate. Well, the one good thing for Duke's offense is Lewis is a very able runner with the football, so I wouldn't be surprised if a play action, maybe a bootleg pass and get him out of, out of the pocket. Two tight ends in the game. Boyle with the handoff, fighting his way to the 12-yard line. Nice gain on the play with Justin Boyle. Well, you see the linebackers trying to step up and fill for Miami, and a good straight arm by Boyle on Glenn Cook, the middle linebacker for Miami, to pick up some key yardage down, down here inside the red zone. I, this is four-down territory. You're down 22 in the fourth quarter. You're going for it no matter what, and I'm sure that's going to affect the play call here. They do not need to get the first down. They just need a few yards, and the quarterback, Lewis, needs to know, hey, we're going for it on fourth down. They need six for first down. Lewis passes over the middle, deflected, almost picked off, and could be a late hit in the backfield against Miami's Brian Paddock. His hands are up. Intentional grounding. 
And I mean, you know, you watch the quarterback till the ball's thrown, and I didn't even see Pata in my radar range when I was watching, and all of a sudden Pata's got the quarterback on the ground. So this is clearly, clearly a late hit by uh, by Pata, the defensive lineman. That continues the drive. There you see just a quick drop, sets his feet. I mean, that, that's two steps away. Pat is two steps away from Lewis before he makes the hit. It's one thing, just, you know, you, all you need to do is run by him. You know the ball's gone. And Lewis got bailed out. That ball should have been intercepted by Glenn Cook. Just a poor decision by the quarterback, but he's bailed out after the late hit. First and goal from the six. Boyle stopped in his tracks. That's because whistles are blown, and you can see a feisty attitude by Boyle, the running back for the Duke Blue Devils. This Offense anxious to put some points up here in the fourth quarter. A false start called against Duke. It's going to back him up. So hard to get those yards inside the red zone. You can't have those penalties. There's no, there's no half the distance when they're against the offense. You get all that yardage. You got to back up. Very tough to get five yards down inside the 20. It's a Duke offense which has scored only six touchdowns through six games this season. Averaging eight and a half points. The only two put up on special teams today. Miami showing blitz. First and goal from the 11. Play action into the end zone. The pass is caught. And it's a Duke touchdown. With two defenders there, Thad Lewis puts it on the money. And Raphael Chestnut with an 11 yard touchdown reception. And for Chestnut, his first touchdown as a Duke Blue Devil. Well, a great play call here. You see there's motion on the right coming across the field, play action, and Chestnut just on a crossing route. And the Duke offense catches Glenn Sharp a little out of position. He fell asleep over there. It looked like he was there and had contained, but he just let, fell asleep and let the receiver, Chestnut, get behind him for the six point touchdown. Well, you had Sharp and Phillips with Chestnut. Able to outlast him in the end zone. The point after is up and good. And the Hurricanes lead is now 20 to 8 over Duke. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. Duke's going to take over at the Miami 32 after Darren Daly had a hard time handling the snap on the last punt. Uh, that's just he's backed up a little bit of inexperience ball just goes right through his hands He's already had one mishandled snap or at least the snap flew over his head for his safety He's fortunate to get rid of that ball and not get a block Brandon taps was coming straight up the middle and came awfully close to getting his fingertips on the ball It's been all Duke in the second half Less than nine minutes to play in the fourth quarter. There is hope in this stadium and certainly on the sidelines as well. A handoff to Boyle. Room on the left side. Challenges Ponder and takes it into the Hurricanes backfield. Well, Opportunity is knocking. Pumped up. The offensive line's pumped up. They do a great job at just collapsing this Miami defense. And it allows Boyle just to take the inside zone play and get bounce that ball to the outside. And there you see just great second effort to push down Ponder and pick up close to a first down. Here, I say you're aggressive as possible. You got second down on six inches. You go for the end zone right here. It's not a better place than right now. Both teams crowd the line of scrimmage. They send Ely in motion left. Lewis handoff Boyle straight ahead. He's going to be brought back and yet another penalty as the flag is thrown on the far sideline. Duke has all three timeouts to work with. 8.37 to play in our fourth quarter. Okay. Offsides call against the Hurricane defense, and that'll move the chains. Even more of a reason to go for the end zone. The defense is going to line up offside. That's why I never could figure out. You've got second down and six inches. Your odds of getting it on third down are pretty darn good. So why not take a shot for the end zone? to try to get it. You have nothing to lose. All you do is tell your quarterback, don't turn the ball over. Spoken like a true quarterback, Gino Toretta. <laughs> what about the fullback hey, that wants That was ball? driven in by, by Coach <laughs> Erickson. He was like, hey, if it's second down and under one, we're going deep. Backs are in the I formation, first and 10 at the 17. They give it to the up back Robinson. The fullback plunges across the 15 yard line for a nice first down gain. 
Should you score a touchdown, obviously, in this situation, two. it's a two-point conversion opportunity. Puts you down by three instead of four. Gino, how about this offensive line? Came into the game allowing 26 sacks on the season. They have held up pretty well, and they've schemed well, well against but, the defense. And they've been getting better against great opponents. You're talking last week they had 255 yards passing against FSU. The previous three games they only had 275, so they are getting better. Backs again in the eye. Play action. Calais Campbell with a hard hit of Lewis, but not before he gets it off and nearly complete. Wow. Riley, the intended receiver, couldn't hold on. A lot and of contact downfield by Glenn Sharp and Riley. And a lot of contact. Kind of surprised that the official did not call a pass interference. Here you see another naked bootleg play. He tries to get that ball downfield. Mm. That's a great call. That's a great play. If there wasn't pass interference, that's a great play by Glenn Sharp because he was able to dive around the receiver and not get his hand on the back. And Lewis took a hard hit by Calais Campbell, who finally got into the backfield. Third down and seven. Boyle, the lone man. Canes come on a blitz. Time for Lewis. Pass is complete. Close to the first down marker. Catch is made by Jomar Wright. Tell you what, he stuck it on right, right there. Just right, just runs a deep, uh, little out route to pick up the first down. But how about the freshman quarterback? He sits there and waits. And I mean, he throws this ball where only his guy can catch it. Great throw and catch right there. Sixth catch made this afternoon for Jomar Wright. He is Duke's active receptions leader. And that's enough for a first down, a good spot. It's a first and goal from the seven yard line. Seven twenty one remains in our fourth quarter. And Miami is being challenged here in the second half on the road. They send Chestnut in motion to the left side a handoff up the middle across the five and into the end zone is Raquan Boyette for a Duke touchdown. Seven yards into pay dirt. Boyette's first touchdown of the season. Well, I know it was a short drive, but it was an impressive drive. That is Lewis, Lewis made the plays when he had to. And there, just a simple quick dive handoff to Boyette. He sticks his head down. Look at the move, get nice vision, sticks his head down and able to get into the end zone. There's not many times you can get the ball inside the 10 on a handoff and not get literally not get touched by the defense. The offensive line did its job. Two juniors, three sophomores up front, lost two players who transferred after last season. And a fine performance here. The two-point conversion. Lewis into the end zone, knocked away. And Levon Ponder marked that one down. That would have cut the gap to three. And Ponder is able to bat it away. But the Duke Blue Devils and their fans are certainly feeling some excitement. It's a five point Miami lead. 706 remains in our fourth quarter. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in the action. Well, Miami forced to call a timeout. One left here in the second half. They didn't recognize the offensive formation. Tried to line up in the nickel package. Spencer Atkins was late to the sideline. Extra defensive back on the field. And now the proper alignment defensively. You saw Duke try to snap the football with the man still on the field. I am able to call that timeout in time. Play action. Lewis has one man covered. But at the 40 has a man open a hard hit but not before the catch is made by Jomar Wright his seventh of the afternoon. That one good for 12 yards. Well, Jomar Wright has really showed up big ever since that fumble in the first half. He's catching everything that's thrown around him. And good throw once again by Thaddeus Lewis. There you see Ponder comes up and makes the stick. But a little bit too late. Duke converts and moves the chains. Here is what is potentially developing. A Duke team 0-6 on the season. They lost to Richmond. And their last victory September of last year against Division I AA Virginia Military Institute. 
a flag on the play, the run by Raquan Boyette, and potentially a late hit on the sideline as well. One man defensively for Miami in orange and white amidst the sea of blue and white. Looks like Tavares Gooden is uh, down. He's on the Duke sideline there. He, uh, he's getting up a little, a little slower than usual. Larry Coker has enjoyed a lot of success in the month of October. 18 and 1 as a Hurricanes coach. The two penalties, one on each side. We'll see what the net result is. Larry Coker, you saw his record in the month of October. And he hears from the officials. The holding is against Duke offensively. And the dead ball personal foul call, as we saw, getting on the sidelines. That's 15 yards. So, so Duke wins. The first down. <laughs> now I'm catching on to this whole like I like thing. how they make the official walk off 10 and then walk off 15. You can't just say net five. <laughs> net five positive for Duke. We know what the calls it's are. A nice day out. Back. Everybody deserves a little exercise, Gino. So again, a, a winless Duke team, only one victory last year. They've lost 12 straight in the ACC over the last two years, and here they are at home, trailing by five and marching downfield against the Canes. Lewis, pump fake, going to run up the middle, and the gap closes quickly with Brian Padham. And Calais Campbell able to show some good instincts on defense. You really haven't seen Lewis break free out of the pocket, fortunately for Miami. Well, I was just going to say we really haven't seen the Miami front four that's been dominant recently put a lot of pressure on him and, and bring him down for many times behind the line of scrimmage. I think they've done a nice job mixing up when he sits in the pocket and throws the ball as well as mixing in the naked bootlegs and getting him out of the pocket and throwing on the run. Second and seven from the Miami 32. Drummer in motion. Drummer in the backfield, but it's a direct handoff across the 30, moving the pile to the 29-28 yard line. It'll set up a third down. Once again, good strength shown by number 20, the running back, Justin Boyle. Well, at this point, four minutes to go in the ball game. I would think that Coach Root is telling his staff to think of another play on fourth down. We're going to go for it here. Third down and four. Off the field is Chestnut. Split wide to the left is Jomar Wright. The lone wide receiver and a double tight end set. Backs are in the I formation. Right in motion, play action. Brown takes a fall into the end zone, passes up, incomplete, with two defenders there. Now it's the lone receiver on the formation, Joe Mar Wright, and LeVon Ponder, among others, there to greet them in the end zone. And now you see the receivers coming out. Nice job by Ponder, the free safety for Miami. Staying out in the center of the field, playing a little defense, some incidental contact. Right there, no call by the official. True freshman quarterback Thaddeus Lewis receives his instructions. It is a fourth and four, and this could be the weight of the ball game in the young freshman's hands. He's got four receivers in the game. He's got time over the middle, batted. It's incomplete. It was bobbled a few times by number 81, Jomar Wright. And it was nearly caught by his teammate Chestnut, but fine defense there on fourth down for the Hurricanes. Well, good and all over the back of Joe Mar Wright. Just a middle route. He's just basically going over to over the ball, trying to stick it in there. And Wright couldn't come up with it. He had about two or three chances to catch this football. Nice job by Gooden, Gooden getting in his arm in there and knocking that ball up in the air. Joe Mar Wright still had a chance to catch it and convert for the first down. Well, Tavares Gooden might have saved the day for the Hurricanes, the junior linebacker, but Duke does have all three timeouts to work with here. The only thing I don't like about that is if you know you're going for it on fourth down, why not on third and four? Try to get at least a yard or two, maybe a bootleg yep. to get 
your quarterback who's a good runner out of the pocket so he can pick up some yards or you know or throw the ball away so worst case scenario is fourth and four not run a route where you have one pass receiver in the route and he's double covered they made it tougher roof did for the freshman Lewis a fourth and four that was incomplete so 339 remains again Duke with all three timeouts and a Miami running game that has been non-existent this afternoon Kyle a handoff Javaris James to the 33 yard line for a gain of about four and that's what we haven't seen because we haven't seen Kyle go under center in the shotgun. and hand the ball off you know I, I don't mind the one back but there was a lot of times where, you, where I ran this offense you get under center so you have a lot more running plays in your arsenal Duke dominating in terms of stats here in the second half and on the scoreboard as well Miami with a John Petty field goal Duke with a touchdown and a safety in the second half due to time constraints we now move forward in the action both coaches and the respected special teams huddles Darren Daly is on the field for Miami and Aaron snap in the third quarter led to a safety he's at the 49 yard line actually that is John Petty into punt for Miami for the first time this afternoon he has punted before on the pooch kicks that's what this is get some air under it and at the five it's going to be caught and brought back a couple yards for Duke number 27 Chris Davis so John Petty is called upon and as you said Gino experience with that short version of punting and Duke will have a long uh, road ahead of itself. Well, see where true they freshman quarterback. This is where inexperience is going to show because no you don't have many opportunities to run a two-minute drill in your career. And uh, I don't know if this is the defense I want to face as a true freshman running a two-minute drill. His first start was against Wake Forest. That ended up being a one-point loss on the road 14 13 he's on the money with his first down pass the catch is made by chestnut on the right sideline well Miami defense I think has got to play these guys a little tighter than they want to you know if I'm a secondary guy I mean maybe the safeties play him a little bit deep but you never want to play prevent and give them these little routes these routes you're going to pick up six seven yards down the field not going to take a lot of time off the clock the receiver's going to step out of bounds Five defensive backs, a couple of linebackers in defensively for Miami. Willie Cooper, the extra safety back there. Lewis again has plenty of time. He goes over the middle, and the catch is made, and it's a first down. And well, a great job because he realized that's going to stop the clock to move the chain, so he's got time to, to uh, get a play call. Pass uh, caught by G, the tight end, and so momentarily, and now the clock running again. Three receivers. A minute nine. Lewis left side overthrown and dangerous is Kenny Phillips nearly had interception number four. Riley, the intended receiver. If you're Miami on defense, you got to be imagining that the majority of the routes will take the receivers to the sideline with no timeouts left. You would think, and then uh, you get one guy up the seam, and all of a sudden your safeties are thinking of the outside. And then there's a big play up the middle. So I think what they're what Duke should be doing now is running four verticals where you got the outside guys running down the field and one guy's running the middle of the field trying to catch the Miami defense off guard. Brian Pata bringing the pressure. Lewis gets it off. And at the 46 yard line, it is incomplete. Once again, Eron Riley, the intended receiver, he had to come back for it, but the penalty marker is at the line of scrimmage. Legal formation. Hmm. It'll be a tough penalty against the Blue Devils. So now there's no replay to even see if this is a catch. Here we'll take a look at it. Just a little bit under throwing. That looks. And eligible receiver. Number 81 was covered. Downfield. Oh, the Tell ineligible the receiver for Go Duke. Down. Jomar Wright is the number they called. But uh, he's they a covered wide receiver. Up. They covered him <laughs> up. Basically, the outside receiver was on the line of scrimmage, and he okay. was on the line of scrimmage. So that means he's ineligible. He's wide open. Over the middle, and there is 81 right. 
And as mentioned, if you forget about the middle of the field and you're prone for that kind of play, well, it's ninth catch of the afternoon. I think what happened on the previous play, right, lined up on the wrong side of the football and his outside receiver covered him up. So what they do? He lined up on the right side this time, and the Miami defense did not adjust. He was run right down the field untouched. Down to 44, 43. Lewis will have to work quick. Steps up. It's Boyle out of the backfield, but another penalty marker at the line of scrimmage, and that'll stop the clock with 36 seconds to play. Well, this is going to be unfortunate if it goes against Duke on another formational call because that's a, a good throw and catch by Boyle. He looks downfield. There it is. Once again, an eligible receiver downfield. Well, it's head roof. I mean, you got to, your heart goes out for this coach. Well, you make a play like that, Lewis. See, once again, they went back to the same formation. The outside receiver's got to realize he's just got to step back off the football. When 81 lines up as a tight end, he's on the line of scrimmage. If somebody else lines up on the line of scrimmage outside of him, that means he's an ineligible receiver, cannot go downfield. You're talking about an outside receiver taking one small step All he's got to do is back off. All he's got to do is look at the official and go, I want to be off the line of scrimmage. Oh. Then the official will say, all right, you're off. Something that subtle. Catch is made at the 45. A move is made at the 30. 25 20, right out of bounds inside the 20. He had a big cushion to catch the football, and Miami could not make the tackle. Well, big Miami game. came with an all out blitz, and, and the quarterback, Lewis, does a great job. He sees the hot receiver, and then Joe Bar Wright does a great job using his size. Straight arms, LeVon Ponders had an outstanding day here for the Miami Hurricanes to get upfield. I mean, we're talking about a guy that could have probably went in the tank early in the first half when he fumbled the ball on the fourth down conversion, but he showed up big the rest of this football game. 39 yards goes the pass play. 21 seconds left, the ball at the 18. Lewis, incomplete, could be pass interference against the flag. There's the flag. Chestnut was the receiver. He had Sharp on his back. And again, that not only moves the football, it stops the clock as well. well I think Sharp got away with one early in the game, but he didn't, didn't get away with one here. Just a slant route. And I think what happened is Sharp got his hands on the back of the receiver, Chestnut, and the officials made the call. Now you get in a situation, you only got 17 seconds left. I mean, you have two plays, three at most. To, uh, to try to score a touchdown here. 17 seconds left. And how big is the missed two-point conversion right here? They're kicking a field goal to tie the game. Four receivers for Lewis. Man at the 10, sharp with the tackle. We'll have to hurry up. The clock, clock continues to move. They got a clock it. Down to they got 10. A clock it. They're going to have one play. They need to snap and spike the ball. Four, three. Three seconds and one play remains for the Duke Blue Devils. And Lewis will get some instructions on the sideline. We'll have to hurry up before the play clock starts. And the ball is at the six yard line. We better get that call in. It's already. <laughs> Lewis is on the sidelines. You got to obviously you got to take a shot at the end zone. I wouldn't be surprised if you run a couple of guys off the field and then run an underneath crossing route to try to catch Miami backing up into the end zone. You catch the crossing route, guy dies in for the score. Miami trying to survive. Duke looking for its first victory in 13 months. Pump fake, end zone, intercepted, and that'll do it. For the Hurricanes, Willie Cooper at the 40, the 50. He'll take it all the way back for a Hurricanes touchdown. No, he slips and falls and runs out of gas, and it's a moot point. Nevertheless, Willie Cooper with the interception, and uh, Duke is actually calling for a fumble on the play. Well, Lewis, I think Lewis just tried to force this ball. They had the slant. They had the crossing route. Oh, wait a second. You've got one Are guy on Duke. One guy's running and the down official. the field. The official is looking him. at it like it's a live play. The one official is. This is going to be interesting. The coaches here. are shaking hands. <laughs> you have sheriffs and support staff on both sides, reminiscent of that Stanford play that we've all seen running into the band. It'd be I'd nice be to see an official call here on the field. He did fumble the football. 
And we'd have it to almost, see. It almost looked like he like he pulled a hamstring or something. The ball came loose. Did he hit the turf? You know, everybody came ground? on the field. I mean, what he should have done is when he intercepted the ball, just taken a knee at that point. Hurricane assistants are telling their players to run into the locker room. That doesn't always necessarily solve things. I remember a Dolphin Patriot game where they came out in their underwear to finish the game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a rather gray area well, right now. Taking a look, I think he hurts his leg here. He's stumbling. Does he fumble? We're watching on the uh, scoreboard here. Uh, that's, that's, a stadium. That's, that's a good call by the official. He came down, down on the ground. The ground caused the fumble. And the coach is satisfied with the replay. Ted Roof, the frustration, you could feel it. It's palpable here as the official is. The uh, only thing I don't like about the, call, the call, you try to, you know, you try to force the ball in there. I'd rather see a, a jump ball at the end zone for the touchdown. Willie Cooper. Yeah, the ball just, ball just comes out. But he hurts his leg. I think he pulled his hamstring. I mean, their secondary is thin enough as it is. Now they got to go to Georgia Tech. They might have four healthy guys. Well, the Duke Blue Devils fall to 0 and 7 on the season. The Miami Hurricanes win their fourth straight in dramatic fashion, 20 to 15.